Hi everybody, my name is Louise and I am the knitting instructor and designer here at Wildflower Will. Welcome to the very first podcast of 2021. There's a couple things I want to finish up from last year. I have got the ball band count, the meters that I knit, I have my dishcloth count, and I have a project count of all the things that I finished for last year. So let's start with dishcloths. I know some of you knew that I was knitting a dishcloth a week. That was my that was one of the challenges I had set for myself last January. I wanted to follow through. I wanted to knit one dishcloth a week. I wanted to have at least 52 done and a half. I am super excited to say that I did. And some weeks I was even I was worried that I would get distracted because I tried to do this challenge the year before and I only got to February. I maybe got four dishcloths done and I totally got distracted. I was worried the same thing was going to happen this year. So some weeks I did a couple of extra dishcloths just as a little reassurance if one week I didn't get one done. Anyways, I got a lot done. I have a, a huge stack of dishcloths. Take a peek at this. Is this? Oh no, this is not all of them. So here's part of them and the other is behind me on the shelf here. So let me grab all of them. Here we are. Here is the whole stack. And I still have them all because I wasn't able to give them out at Christmas because obviously with everything going on, our Christmas plans got really altered and no big gatherings. So these are just, I'm, I'm going to pick out some, there was a few in here that were a little wonky, some that I, I call my learning dishcloths because I learned a lot on them and realized that they weren't really suited for a dishcloth pattern. Like this would be a prime example. Remember these ones I knitted Halloween? Love the stitch. It's a nip below stitch, two color, a little too stretchy for a dishcloth. This is a fisherman's rib. Again, a lot of horizontal stretch. Probably not the best thing for a dishcloth once this gets wet and the weight of it is probably really going to stretch out even further. So these, these are two ones that will go into my kitchen drawer and, and I will use them and, you know, they'll be fine. They'll be a dishcloth. They will wash dishes. They will wipe counters. They'll be totally fine. But now this is something more like I would gift. This is the size that I was kind of aiming for. This looks like the garter slip stitch. This was a fun one. Don't worry. I'm not going to go through all of these, but there are 74 dishcloths in total that I knit. So a lot of them were just some of my super simple diamond dishcloth really simple, easy to knit in an evening. This one here looks like, it, it, there's a scrappy one. This one's got green on top. So it was just, uh, you know, using up those odd bits. This was a fun one. You can see the seam over here on the corner. It was knit around in a circle and seamed. This one looks, uh, I'm thinking that's the granite stitch in one color. I mean, there were so many fun ones that I tried and some I would definitely do again, some I would not do as a dishcloth. This was my garter stitch color work. That is really nice. It's almost thick enough to be a pot holder. This is the two color granite stitch. Oh, these, these ones were fun. This was when I was obsessed with the red heart scrubby. There's a few of those in here. So anyways, 74. I guess I didn't have to worry about not hitting my target of 52. So that means I'm going to have lots. I can replace probably all the, the older dishcloths that I have in my drawer. I can replace with fresh ones and still have enough. So I am ahead for next Christmas. These will be Christmas gifts next year. So that was a fun challenge. That was a fun challenge trying different patterns and I'm really using them almost as a gauge swatch just to kind of learn about the stitch patterns, the different stitch patterns I use to see how tight they were, what kind, what size needles I needed, if they needed a border around them, if they laid flat on their own. It was just, it was just a fun learning project. And so now some of those stitches that were my favorite, I'm going to incorporate those into some projects this year. So dishcloths huge success. I'm not going to do the challenge again this year because I am still well stocked for dishcloths and I'm going to use that knitting time on some other projects. Ball bands. I started off last year 
a few of you had said about how you kept track of your yardage and so you knew how much yarn that you had knit over the year. I have never done that and it was something that I really wanted to try and do for myself. So remember this box? I found this box at Michael's and I liked it just because it's of the saying, you belong among the wildflowers. And remember the first few months of the year, I was doing New Start Monday videos. And then the last Friday of the month, I was coming back in and kind of doing a finished Friday, showing you the projects I had finished and then looking in the box and, and seeing what I had for ball bands. I only did that for maybe three months. I'm guessing I'm not entirely sure, but I ended up stopping doing the Friday video because I just kind of incorporated everything into the Monday videos. But here we are at the end of the year and the box, the box, actually it'll kind of looks full now because remember for those first few videos, I kept thinking, why did I pick such a large box? It isn't, you know, I thought it, I will never fill this box. And Friday night over on Facebook in the Fiber Friends Friday Night Knitting, it's a, it's a closed group, a private group, and it is a fun, a fun community of knitters. Any knitters welcome to join, go over to Facebook and just search Fiber Friends Friday Night Knitting answer the questions and you can come join the group. And every Friday night I host a live knit night on Facebook and we were chatting about my ball bands. And I said that I had a tip as to how to fill your ball band box is to knit balls of yarn that have huge ball bands. Look at this. This was, well, you can see the Karen Cakes anniversary cake those huge balls that were what they were like a thousand grams. I have two of those in here. Look at that. Crazy huge. So when you take these two ball bands out, these were from the two sweaters that I knit. This is what I'm left with. So this is a little more realistic. When you, when you look at little teeny ball bands, you need a lot of these to fill this box. But anyways, I went through and I think I I know this isn't a hundred percent accurate because I know some of my scrappy dishcloths didn't I didn't have ball bands left over and some of them I weighed and estimated and wrote on a piece of paper and put in the box others I know I forgot so if anything this is probably a little on the low side but I, I don't know it's a good starting point and my total was 10,000 776 meters. And I know that sounds like not, well, I don't, 10,000 meters. That does sound like a lot, but I know some of you have knit a whole lot more than that. A couple of knitting, knitting friends said they had knit like 25,000. I think Elena said she had knit 35,000. I'm like, I knew at that point, I didn't even have to add up those ball bands because I knew I was nowhere close, but 10,000, I'm pretty happy with that. Since this is the first year doing it, I have no idea how that compares to other years, but I feel like this year I got a lot of knitting done. I've recorded that in my planner. So next December, I will be able to compare what I've knit for 2021 to that 10,000 and we'll see. And I'm not worried about, I'm not going to try to, you know, make sure that I beat that. It'll just be whatever it is, but I thought it'll just, just give a good baseline, I guess, of what maybe I do generally knit for the year. Anyways, it was kind of fun. So the other thing that I did was I looked back through Instagram and through, I had some totes here that I put finished projects in and I, I made a list of what I had finished in 2020. I finished well, 74 dishcloths and 26 other projects. Now let me see. Actually, you know what? I'm going to cheat. I wrote them down. I mean, I'll just read them so I don't mess up the numbers. I finished two pairs of mittens, only one shawl, and it was a hitchhiker. That kind of surprised me. I thought I would have had more shawls, but I only finished one. I did finish four scarves. You'll remember I did a lot of, well, I did four of the mistake rib scarves. And I really like them. Love the pattern. Super easy. You don't need the pattern. Once you get going, you can read your stitches. It's great for knit nights, you know, virtual, because that's what we're doing now. We're doing virtual knit nights, but when we eventually can get back to doing in-person knit nights, it would be a great pattern to do at knit night. I did three cowls. I did seven hats, 
three pot holders, one pair of fingerless gloves, mitts, gloves, mitts. I don't know which, I, they were fingerless anyways. And you guys all know that that is not my favorite thing to do, but I did them as a class sample because I did manage to squeak in, I think, two classes at the beginning of last year before everything came to a halt at Little Red Mitten. And Brioche Fingerless Mitts was the project that I taught. And one thing that I am really excited about is that I finished five sweaters. I cast on seven and I finished five. So that makes me really happy. That was, that was a big goal because this is probably the most productive sweater knitting year that I have ever had. So that is my wrap up of 2020. So like I said, I'm going to keep track of all these numbers and a year from now, we'll be back here and I will see, see what I've done. I don't know if I'll get five sweaters. Maybe I will. We'll see. I haven't really thought about, you know, making a new year's predictions or new year's knitting goals because I'm typically not all that good at following through on them. I did do pretty good with last year though. I had three main goals and that was to do my dishcloth a week, to always have a sweater on the needles and to do, be consistent here with videos. And I'm pretty proud of myself that I did, I did manage to do that. All right, let me show you what I've been working on. And it has not been much. I had grand plans for this sock. The first, uh, the first plan for this sock was it was going to be my Christmas Eve sock. I was going to wear it. I was going to admire it on my foot as I was relaxing, watching a Christmas movie on Christmas Eve. Did not happen. Second plan was it was going to be my New Year's Eve sock and the same thing. I thought I'll put my socks on when I come home from work. I will admire them on my feet as I am watching 2020 fade into the distance and welcome 2021 in. Obviously that did not happen either. So I have no new goals of when this sock will be done other than hopefully soon. Um, I have knit a couple of rounds and that is all I've done since the new year is just work a round or two on this decreasing the gusset stitches away just so I could say that I had knit on this sock every day. What I have been doing though is working in this yarn room. I thought I would take an afternoon over New Year's. I would sort through the last totes and bags of yarn and um, and get things put away and I would have this yarn, this, this whole room in tip-top shape and it would be a great way to start the new year with everything organized. Well, I spent that one afternoon in here and then I spent all day Saturday, all day Sunday, and pretty much all day today on Monday in here as well. And every time I turned around, I found another container of yarn that was tucked away in a corner. I pulled out some bags of yarn from my bedroom a few days ago. I brought those in here, sorted everything. I have literally been going ball by ball by ball, putting it on a shelf, sorting, keeping putting things in uh, bins to, to donate, to get rid of. Oh, and it has been a big, big job. Uh, I am very close to the end. And once this video goes up, I am going to work on the sorting videos that I have done like probably months ago that have been, um, they're sitting there recorded. I just need to edit them. I will do that and I will get it up soon. And you can see, and then I think then we'll do another video kind of as a finale, how the whole room actually looks. But I have to say, I am loving it. It has been well worth the effort, the work, and the amount of time it's taken me away from my knitting. It has been worth it. This is going to be a great space to sit and work, knit, design, record videos up here. I'm going to love spending time up here now. So that kind of brings me into my plan for 2021. I got to get used to saying that. I know I had just a couple of minutes ago said that I didn't really have any plans, like no goals, no New Year's resolutions kind of thing for my knitting, but maybe I do. I, I guess what I really want to do is I definitely want to start teaching again. 
I definitely want to start designing again. Both those things have been put on hold this last year. And this year, I'm really feeling the pull towards color work. And in different forms, not necessarily stranded like your traditional Fair Isle, some different ways of playing with color in stitches and mixing colors together. So maybe that is my three things. My three, my three things that I want to focus on, teaching, designing, and color work. I think really that's that's kind of what I'm feeling in a nutshell. So, okay, so to back those up a little bit. Designing, designing I can do, I can do that at home. I can do that in this new space that I'm going to introduce you to soon. Teaching is a little trickier because the yarn shops right now obviously are not having in-person classes. So how am I going to teach? I thought I would just put a little segment right in here in the in our weekly podcast, do a little mini knitting lesson. Hopefully it will inspire you, whether you are an experienced knitter or you are relatively new, it'll just be something to spark some creativity and maybe try something new, try a new technique. That's what I'm hoping. So I'm really excited about that. And designing, and then from the new techniques, things that I'm just going to try and, and wrap everything all in together. The things that I'm excited about knitting and wanting to wear. I'm going to try to play around with some color, some new stitch techniques, and then incorporate a design. So this week, what I want to talk to you about is the dip stitch. Dip. D-I-P. And I have, a, I have a little sample here, and I'll show it to you. So here's the dip stitch. It is basically knitting in stripes and then pulling up an elongated stitch to break up that stripe pattern. So let me show you how it's done. Okay, so what I've got here for the dip stitch, I just cast on, this is just a little sample. I've got, oh, I can't remember how many stitches. I just, I just cast on a random number of stitches. I've got two balls of Lopi. The Lopi Light, so it's a worsted weight. I have a, I think I have a five and a half millimeter needle here. I just grabbed a larger needle. It is five and a half, five and a half millimeter. I grabbed a larger size because I wasn't sure what the tension was going to be like on here. By creating this elongated stitch, I wasn't sure if it would cause it to be tight. So I went with a little bit bigger needle, but I don't really think you need to. So I would just say, just match your needle size with your yarn size for this stitch. And what I have been doing, I just I just cast on a random number of stitches. I've worked six rows of knitting. Then I've switched colors. And on this first red color, I've worked three stitches. And then in the fourth stitch, I've worked an elongated stitch. I've worked three stitches, I worked an elongated stitch. Three more stitches, elongated stitch, three more stitches, elongated. And then the elongated stitch is always done with your new color of yarn. Then in the red, I just knit six rows of red. It looks like it's, it's interrupted, but though that gray stitch, that gray elongated stitch was not there. This was just a row, six row section of the red color. Then when I came up here to switch to the light gray, I worked three stitches and then I did a gray elongated stitch down six rows into the red. And then I worked three gray stitches, an elongated stitch. So it dips down six rows and then I knit three stitches and then I dip down six rows with my light gray. So this elongated stitch is just sitting on the top of our work. And going down six rows, that is just a random number. See that? It is just sitting on top of those red stitches. I picked six rows. And in the research I've done on this stitch, six rows is the is the longest elongated, elongated stitch I have seen. I have done it five rows and it works fine. 
I think the compromise between the two is you want it to be long enough that you get the effect of the of the elongated stitch, but you don't want to do it too long that you're going to have something that's going to be too loose and could potentially get caught on something. So what I have done is I have stacked these elongated stitches on top of one another. So there's a, a red elongated and then a gray elongated. Up here, I'm going to alternate them. So I'm going to put, I'm, we're going to switch. I think I've done six rows. Yep, six rows of my gray. So what I'm going to do now is pick up the red. And I'm just going to catch the gray along the side. I want my red stitch. So I'm going to knit three. Actually, where am I here? Three. I'm going to go over more. Four. So now I want to go down, I want to make my dip stitch. I want to go down six rows. So in the stitch that is on my left hand needle, we're not going to be using this stitch and don't let it come off your needle once we finish this elongated stitch. So you're going to count down six rows. Your right hand needle comes in the front to the back, right through that stitch. You wrap your new color around the back and you pull it through. And then I have just been pulling it so you get the full length. So there's a new stitch. So that is a brand new stitch and it's just sitting wrapped around that needle. We're going to knit the next stitch on the left hand needle. But now we have an extra stitch because we've added this extra one. We don't want to change our stitch count. So we're going to pick up this elongated stitch and we're just going to lift it up and over just as if we were casting off. And then now I'm going to keep going in my in my pattern, which is knit three, actually knit five on this row because we're going to offset them. So we're going to go one, two, three, four, five, So that I've got a red, I've got a gray down here, I'm going to do another red. So my pattern is going to say go down six, six stitches. One, two, three, four, five, six. Go in front to back. And remembering this, this next stitch on the needle, it stays there, it doesn't come off. We're just using, going down six rows in that stitch. And we just pull that new loop up. We knit the next stitch as normal, and now we need to cast off this one extra stitch or pass it over and let it slide off just so our stitch count is back to normal. And now I'm just going to knit to the end of the row. Where, where, what do I have here? Two, three, four, five. I'll do, I'll just do one more here. Anyways, we'll do one more. One more stitch and now we'll do the dip. We're going to go down to the sixth row below, needle in front to back, wrap it around the needle, and then you're just going to pull it through and then just kind of pull it. We don't want it too loose, we don't want it too tight, so you're just going to pull it so it's about the same height as the other stitches. You're going to knit one more stitch. And then we're going to pass this one over and off just to keep our stitch count correct. And then I have one more stitch to knit. So what do you think of this stitch pattern? I think it's kind of interesting. This is the first time I've played around with it and I still need to do a little more playing with it just because there looks like there is a gap between this gray elongated stitch 
Then there looks like a gap and then there's the red. And I would like that red to be right down on top of the gray. Well, that's only if I'm stacking them, isn't it? Hmm. See, I need to do a little, I need to do a little playing around here, but still, okay, let's look at this one. So I've got a gray and a gray and the red is here in the center, but still see how the red only came down so far and there's still a gray stitch underneath there. So it looks like I need to go down one more or I'm needing to knit one row less. What I was thinking was, see, this is a little, this is, this is the little inside to my, my design process. I was thinking I wanted to take the dip stitch. I wanted to drop down six rows. So I was knitting six rows. Maybe I need to knit less and then count down six so that there is not a gap in between there. Hmm. Anyways, it is fun to do. It's easy enough to do. Is it worth the, the, um, what's the word? Is it worth the effort to go and doing that for the color effect that you get? I don't know. And don't totally judge on my little sample because this is, this is pretty rough. I mean, my gauge could be a little bit better and I'm not, I don't know what, what I'm thinking about the stacking on top. I think the offsetting will give a better look. So I'm going to play around with this. So you can follow me over on Instagram because that is where I post pretty much daily updates. And I've been posting a lot to my stories lately, just kind of with the whole yarn room organizing and what I've been, what I've been working on. So that is the best place. If you want to see how my knitting journey is going during the week, check wildflower wool out over on Instagram. And if you feel so inclined to give this a try, I would love for you to post pictures and tag me at wildflower wool so I can see how you're making it with this stitch. So next Monday, Tuesday, did I, did I mention that I'm going to change the, 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 uh, the posting date for videos instead of trying to do them Mondays, I'm going to do them on Tuesdays just with my, my, my work schedule. I think Tuesdays will work out a little easier for me. So Tuesday mornings, the videos should be up for you to view. Um, next Tuesday, I'm going to come back. I, I want to play around with making a cowl with this. And I think I will experiment a little bit, probably just on my gauge swatch a little bit more, playing around with the depth. I may try four stitches or three stitches. I'm not so sure though, if I only go down three stitches, if you'll get enough effect, enough bang for your buck, so to speak. I'm not sure. Maybe you will, maybe, I don't know. So I'm gonna try that and see what um, what the effect is like. I may switch around the colors, the gray and this ready color though. There's a nice contrast there. I think it'll be fun. You never know until you try, right? And we'll come back next Tuesday and we'll see. I may decide that it, it's worth it to do a whole garment out of it, or maybe it's not. And next week, I'll give you a little, a little, well, not really, not a peek, but, um, I will let you know there is a tuck stitch that I want to play around with next week. So that will be interesting too, because you have to drop stitches to make that stitch. So that should be pretty fun. So anyways, I hope you liked this. I hope this just sparked a little bit of interest or a little bit of intrigue that you're just curious to see what the stitch is going to be like, or maybe it will Maybe you'll grab some spare needles and yarn and cast on a little gauge swatch and try it yourself. All right, everybody. Thank you so much for watching and happy knitting. And I will see you next week. Bye.